Many of the wealthy Romans lived in villas that sprawled the countryside during the Republican period. These houses were brilliant architectural complexes that had elaborate gardens and were decorated with paintings and sculptures. Classic Roman houses of the rich had two parts, the first grouped around the atrium and the second around the peristylium. The atrium and the peristylium were perfect adaptations to the heat of the Mediterranean. They were open to the sky, letting fresh air in to circulate among the corridors and rooms. In the atrium, a small pool, the impluvium, would catch the rainwater, whereas in the peristylium, the rain would water the plants. Roman houses generally had no windows at all, and drew its air and light from the openings of the atrium and peristylium. As the centerpiece of the house, the atrium was the most lavishly furnished room. It contained the little chapel to the ancestral spirits, the household safe, and sometimes a bust of the master of the house. The peristylium was the garden of the house. It was usually surrounded by columns supporting the roof. In it were grown herbs and flowers, particularly roses, violets, and lilies. Small statues and statuettes or outdoor furniture would adorn the space which, on sunny days, would be used as an outdoor sitting area. Aside from the main door, there was a servant's entrance, the posticum, usually positioned at the side of the house. It was used by slaves, servants, humble visitors, and sometimes even by the master of the house when he wanted to leave the house unnoticed by the onlookers in the main street. Main rooms were decorated with colored plaster walls and, if they could be afforded, mosaics. These decorated floors were a statement of your wealth and importance. The grander mosaics had to be done by experts and were very expensive. The triclinium was the Roman dining room. In earlier days, the meals were eaten in the atrium, but with the introduction of the Greek practice of reclining when eating, the triclinium was set aside as a room especially for dining in. The cubiculum was the bedroom of the Roman house. Bedrooms situated around the atrium tended to be smaller than those around the peristylium. To the Romans, these rooms were of less importance than the other rooms of the house. According to the apparent tradition of the Roman house of giving each room a very specific use, the floor mosaics of the cubiculum often clearly marked out the rectangle where the bed was to be placed. Though mosaics could be spectacular, furniture, even in the homes of the rich, tended to be basic. Stools were common as opposed to chairs, and reclining couches were used. Houses of the rich had water piped straight to them, unlike flats and apartments of the poor. Lead pipes brought water to a house. These pipes were taxed according to size. The larger the pipe, the more the tax. Archaeologists can usually tell the wealth of an owner of a Roman house by simply looking at the size of the lead pipes that brought water to that house. Houses were also centrally heated by what was known as a hypocost. This was an underfloor heating system. Slaves were charged with keeping the hypocost both clean and alight during the day. The system of heating was also used to keep some Roman baths hot if they had no access to naturally heated water. The Roman house is a perfect example of the many advances made in technology and architecture during the Roman Republic, as well as how spirituality affected the people during that time period.